using it and talking about these. These are the new, fairly new target novelizations of the 60th anniversary special. So you've got The Star Beast by Gary Russell. You've got Wild Blue Yonder by Mark Morris and you've got The Giggle by James Goss um, all three released um, they released as audiobooks uh, initially and then they released physically on I believe the 9th of January so I've been reading these the past week or so um, and yeah I wanted to talk about them you can see the spines here now you can immediately tell is that they're very uh, not all of these books are, are created equally the giggle is much thicker than both of these um, the star beast is by far the thinnest uh, you can also see on my I think this might just be mine it's a slight misalignment in the printing so the target sort of logo kind of goes over the edge um, is a little bit annoying but also I think the book is so thin that I can't imagine I'm the only one with a misalignment because that's a very small margin for error there um, but yeah these books all released together I got them all together um, you can see I've, they've been read um, and so I basically thought I'd, I'd talk about them one by one not so much in terms of the stories themselves um, because you know if you want to hear my thoughts on the stories there's my initial reaction videos um, you can watch to, to get a sense of what I thought of all these stories but I wanted to talk about them as novelizations and, about, um, and as adaptations you know so we'll start of course with Star Beast by Gary Russell, which, yeah, is a very thin book. I have collected a fair few of the, um, of the new series Target books. Um, not all of them. I d I've not got any of the last release with, like, Kabam and Wolves of Mars and, um, Dragon Invasion and, and those ones. I've not got any of those yet. Um, I don't think I, I didn't get around to Fires of Bombay or Eaters of Light, but all the other ones I got uh, the new series stories anyway. Um, and what I really liked about the series of novels is the way they deviated from um, the TV stories, and that they, you know, they weren't beholden to what the what the episodes were on TV. They were their own thing as well. Um, this book is easily the thinnest of the ones I have certainly um, and is a very one-to-one -one adaptation of the um, of the TV story you can see so this tells you all the different um, books in the new Target Adventure series so yeah I've got Rose, Dalek, The Christmas Invasion the Crimson Aura, The Day of the Doctor, Twice Upon a Time and the Witchfinders. Um, got your chapters here. Again, you know, seven chapters is really not very, um, not a long book at all. Um, but this was interesting. As I say, it's a fairly beat by beat one-to-one -one adaptation but you do get um you get this character Stu Ferguson who's this sort of running character throughout it who meets the doctor at the start uh, and then he's working at the steelworks and gets involved in the story he is for some reason the milkman from the beginning of the stolen earth um and it's, it's weird in a way because you get a load of this talk about that but this book does get rid of the pre-title sequence where the Doctor and Donna sort of explain where everyone's at and what's happened previously. You do obviously get some explanations of that, but I kind of think that would work better in prose. 
because then it did on TV, but you don't get that in this, it's not there. Um, so you start with the Doctor arriving in Camden. Um, yeah, so you get this interaction with this Stu Ferguson character, you get the Doctor in Camden. Um, then he obviously bumps into Donna, they insert a um, Deleted scene here. Where the doctor creates a screen with the sonic screwdriver, which was filmed and then was deleted from the episode, is in here. Um, I'm trying to think, is there any, any other major? You just get sort of slight extensions of scenes and slight, slight reimaginings. You get more stuff with this Stu character. Um, and it's just like slight, um, dialogue, uh, additional dialogue, um, things you get a fun reference there, so Malcolm Taylor and Planet of the Dead, um, but it's a fairly, um, a fairly basic novelization, fairly basic adaptation of, uh, of the story, to be honest, um, it's not bad at all, uh, it's a fairly easy read, but um, if you're looking for something that will be sort of a different interpretation of the story, I'm not sure this is really it, it's, it is a novelization of the TV episode, uh, first and foremost, uh, it's not another adaptation of the story it's 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 what's on tv but in a book and uh, you get a couple of deleted scenes in extra moments but not much more than that i'm trying to think if there's anything anything else sort of really notable with this book worth mentioning i don't think there is it was good fun but uh fairly beat by beat um adaptation novelization then Wild Blue Yonder which is a little bit thicker if we bring in the star piece you can see it's a little bit thicker than the star piece but you know not by much not by uh, a massive amount uh, but this again was really good. This really made me appreciate. Really made me. Go. Wild Blue Yonder was my favourite of the three TV stories, um, and this book only solidified that. I really enjoyed it. You can see it's got um, twelve chapters, including the prologue. So you've got the prologue, Apple, and then Venslaw, Collis, Brait, Galvani, Stond. Ratico, Van Dien, Blintz, Sensu, One, and Taxladia. Uh, I think I pronounced most of those right. Might be Taxladia. Might be Gil, Gilvain, I don't know. Um, um, again, like the Star Beast, this is a fairly a basic beat by beat adaptation. You get a little bit more into the Doctor and Donna's um, um, thoughts about about the not things. You get a little bit the action sequences, and that's this is true in all three of the books. The action sequences can be a little bit more um, dramatic and a little bit more. Um, almost impossible because you, you don't have to visualize them so you can describe things that are far more exhilarating and um, would be much more difficult to do visually um, but again this was a fairly um, a fairly basic novelization adaptation um, <coughs> the, the 
monsters are not called the not things in this, which seems to be the name for them. It seems to be the official name, and it's kind of what everyone has started calling them anyway. Um, but in this, um, what they're referred to as. Um, yeah, you just get slightly more physical descriptions of, the, of how the knot thing sort of change. And, um, and yeah, but overall I did feel that, again, this, like the Star Beast, was a fairly sort of beat by beat um, uh, adaptation. I preferred Wabu Yonder because I prefer the story to the Star Beast, but they're very similar in terms of adaptation of the original source material, in terms of the novelization. Of course, Wild Blue Yonder is a bit of a bigger book, so you just get a bit more um, than you do in the Star Beast, but both were fairly decent. Uh, if sort of, I don't want to say unambitious, but there's, there aren't many surprises with these books, whereas The Giggle by James Goss is a totally different beast. This was easily, 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 easily my favourite of the three. Um, it's not my favourite of the stories. As I say, Wild Blue Yonder was my favourite of the TV stories, but in terms of these novelizations, this is by far and away uh, the best, the most interesting, the most successful, the most dynamic. Um, you can see here, it's nearly twice the length of the Star Beast, um, and it's kind of... kind of insane to me that they're both going for uh, 9.99 in the UK um, but this is brilliant now this doesn't have chapters in the same way as the others it has moves so move one move two If you're only going to pick up one of these books, they're all the same price. I would recommend this one the most of the three, because the other two are what's on TV, but in a book. And that's not necessarily a bad thing if you like reading your Doctor Who stories. Um, definitely pick them up, they're not awful, but this really put me in mind of books like Rose and The Day of the Doctor that really take liberties with the TV story and do something totally different and unique, um, especially Day of the Doctor, the way, if you have that book, if you've read that book, the way it formats itself, um, the way it plays with narration and who is telling you the story, um, this book really put me in mind of that, um, so I definitely, definitely recommend it if you want to go in blind with this book and just experience it yourself because I think that you should go and get it or get the audio book I think it's read by Dan Starkey I'm not sure how he how he does how they managed to turn this book into an audio book but it is available um, of course all three are available as audio books um but yeah, if you're only going to get one of these books, definitely get this one. I highly recommend it. I'm saying all this because I'm now going to spoil the really fun thing about this book. Um, and I, I want you to experience that yourself because it's, it's kind of fun. So last chance, uh, go get this book. If you're thinking about getting one of these, get this one. Okay. And... Um, reveal what's so fun about this book is that if I just find it off screen 
So. It's written by James Goss, of course. But um, you do get certain things, right? So move on. This is the end. Is that cheating? Well, it depends on how you play the game. How many moves ahead can you see? And at the start of move two, go back two spaces to London in the here and now. And you think, oh, okay, like, like games and stuff because of the toy maker. And you keep reading. There's all this talk about games and stuff. You get into UNHQ and then suddenly you're inside the brain of the President of the United States. Can you find your way out? This is a real maze. You can find your way out. I'll leave it there for you if you want to. Do it. <clears throat> and that's it. That's all move five years. It's a maze. And then again you get a little bit more in UNHQ and then Move 9 is this, and it's a game. And I was reading this and I was thinking, oh right, okay, so it's like, it's like games, it's like games and stuff because of the toy maker, but then as it goes on, over so many years, who could do that? And then you get these eye emojis. And I went, hang on a minute. And then, As the doctor gets to the toy maker's shop, hello, I said, and it reveals that, yeah, the toy maker is writing the book. The toy maker and the giggle by me. Um, and so they just have a massive amount of fun and what's really fun is that the toy maker is a really interesting choice of narrator because he's sprinkling these games throughout and then he reveals that it's him move 1024 which of course in the celestial toy maker the trilogy game has 1023 moves and then you go to move 14 and that's just sort of telling you what the toy maker is um, but then as they go into the toy maker's domain it basically for Donna it becomes like a, uh, a choose your own adventure sort of thing with different doors you have to move go to this move go to this move go to this move and the book is playing a game with you and you can go to all these different ones but then really interesting things start to happen so you can see we're in the sort of 18 the late teens to the 20s door 2 go to move 7 so you go back to move 7 you shouldn't be here Donna Noble you've fallen down a long snake uh, and at the, at the moment here she's in UNHQ you just fall back to there or you know you keep going but you can decide oh well I'm just gonna read it in order of the different moves and ignore all this stuff but then you get to move 24 naughty you shouldn't be on this move there's no way of getting to it you've been cheating haven't you Go to move 55 and move 55. It's the end. Uh, so the book is playing a game with you and it sends you on loops and it sends you back and stuff. You can try and cheat it, but it'll know. Um, and then, yeah, eventually you get that. Uh, the toy maker also the way 
they novelise, the way they um, adapt into prose, the spice of your life. Um, musical sequence. Again, you get more games. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's just really interesting, I think, as well, the way they format the writing of the by generation and um, the game of catch. Um, and you have them on different sides of the page and stuff. In the book they're referred to as the old doctor and the new doctor, so not numbers, it's just old and new. Um, and you get, yeah, this is like the way they write the, the game of catch. Um, it's just really cleverly done. when the toy maker is defeated um, then he stops writing the book um, move one go again um, but I think so yeah I think this this book was really fun because the toy maker is such an interesting choice of narrator and when I was reading it I felt like I was playing a game, which is exactly what you want, um, and I didn't get, I didn't really get that from the TV story at all, um, <clears throat> I think also, this sort of fixes a little problem I had with the TV story, with the by generation and the game of catch, the way they defeat the toy maker, um, in the TV series, in, in the TV episode, it just sort of looks like, oh, he, he missed, he just didn't catch it. Well, that's a bit disappointing, and it doesn't make use of the fact that you've got two doctors, but in the book, he's trying to, it makes a point of being like, he's trying to keep his eye on both of the doctors at the same time, and the ball, and he just loses it for a second in between the two of them. And so he's not ready for when it comes to him, and he misses it. And so it's kind of this thing of, it's almost implied, I felt, that the doctors are deliberately trying to confuse the toy maker by, by working with each other to confuse him and distract him, and then he misses the ball. And if that was in the original script for the TV episode, I think that is ultimately a fault of the direction, that that doesn't come through at all. On TV, and if it's not in the original script, I think that's James Goss looking at that and going, "Okay, but what? Why would he miss the ball? Like he can't just miss, surely." Um, so, yeah, while beyond not while beyond the giggle, uh, I thought it was a fantastic read. I had a great time reading it. Um, it doesn't. Like the others, it doesn't really expand too much beyond what you see on TV, but just the way it plays with format and narration and the way it plays a game with you, I just felt that's this is exactly what a novelization, uh, a Doctor Who's novelization should be, because if I wanted to experience Wild Blue Yonder, well, I'm always going to go to the TV story rather than the, the novel, you know what I mean? Whereas I think this is my preferred way of experiencing this story as opposed to the TV episode to be honest with you I just think this is better um, and the story still has a lot of the problems that I found with the story on TV but there are little things that um, I just prefer the way it's dealt in this in this version um, and as I said at the start I'm not judging these based on is it a good story because these are adaptations of stories that exist on TV and I'm not commenting on the story as it exists on TV. I'm, I'm purely looking in terms of adaptation and novelization. And whilst these two are by no means bad, this is just exactly the type of thing I, I, I wanted it to be. So I had a really great 
great time with the giggle. I had a good time with all of them, but the giggle was definitely the, my favourite. Um, so yeah, those are the three new 60th anniversary target novels. Have you got any of these? Um, are you considering getting some of these? Um, let me know. I am also, I've got the Church on Ruby Road uh, hardback novel on pre-order as well, so I'll be reading that and I'll do a video on that as well, I think, probably. Which should release. And I'm going to get this video out for the 25th, which will be um, two months from the start of East Airing, and I think that is when uh, the Church on Ruby Road is due to be released, so um, physically at least anyway, so um, yeah, thank you very much for watching, thank you for listening, I hope you enjoyed this video, um, as I say, let me know, have you read these books, which one was your favourite, what other stories would you like to see get novelised in the target novel range, and um, yeah, thank you very much for watching, please do like and subscribe and comment and all those youtubery things and i will see you in the next video goodbye